Okay, I'm starting with a, an extrusion that I've made and I've opened up one of the faces. And you'll see why in a moment. And so, uh, you know, you can go in here, of course, and uh, this is basically a sketch and you can edit that sketch. So let's create a sub D and attach it to this object. Extrude that. It's going to make it a little interesting here. Okay, so I've made some sort of like a handle. And I want to attach this here. And so I'm going to import reference. And what that does is it takes the picked faces and brings them into uh, the sub-D world. So you can see the, the yellow things here. That means that I can constrain to them now. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to say to edge. And so what has happened is that I have constrained the sub-D edge to this edge of the, the cylinder. And by default, it's tangent. If I go in the side view here, you can see by default it's tangent to the surface. I could say no tangency, uh, which means it's free to move. You can see it's a, there's an angle there. I can say um, perpendicular to surface, which is going to look kind of weird here, but you'll get the idea. Uh, now, if I had grabbed the, I could have grabbed this, the, the planar face off the end, made it perpendicular, and gotten something similar to similar to this. Um, I can also use curvature continuity. Um, and, you know, in this case, it's planar, so it doesn't really make much difference. So let's go to back to tangent. I can control the strength of the tangency through this. You can see the tangent gets real strong there, so it pushes it way up, or a very low level tangent. So it's not very, you know, it, it basically controls the how, how hard that tangent pushes. Uh, I can control the angle. So by default, when it's tangent, it's a zero angle. So I could say take it up to 30 degrees, and so it's got a 30 degree there or minus 30 degrees. So I can control the angle that one surface comes off another. I can also change the offset distance. And you can see what that's doing is it keeps the tangent, but it's actually this edge is now sitting on an offset surface. So those are very useful um, sort of constructs there uh, to uh, enable us to attach to existing SOLIDWORKS geometry. Now let me go ahead and convert this. And now we have like two open surfaces. So if we go into the surfaces menu, we can knit these two surfaces together and I can say create a solid. And so I should have one single solid, there we go, that is resulting. So that's a single solid. And for example, I can uh, grab that face. And if I go into features, I should be able to do a shell on it. Um, uh, one millimeter. I don't know if that, how big that is. Let's see. So there, I did a one millimeter shell on it, and you can kind of see what that, that looks like. Um, I can also go back here and edit this sketch. So I'm going to change the size of this. So this really shows sort of the parametric nature and the ability to change and dimension things.
Okay, you see it's changed this dimension of this sub D where it attaches. Um, and then it's gone through and it's re redone the associated features on the bottom. So it, it works very well within sort of your parametric world. Um, the other way to attach things uh, to one another is like this. Let me uh, let's do this. Uh, let's create another another box, and this time we're going to attach it in a different way. Where instead of attaching it um, along an edge, we're going to attach it to a face. You see that middle one there? That middle button scales everything. So I'm going to attach it to the face here. Grab the wrong one. Grab that one. So I'm opening it up again, just like I did before. And then I'm going to import reference. And I'm going to grab some surfaces here. Because I'm going to my, you know, I probably only would need one of those for now. But I'm going to move it around so you'll, you'll see some things happen. Okay, now I'm going to grab these edges. And I'm going to say two face. And you can see it's constrained to that face. Now here's where um, if we wanted to mess around with uh, tangency and tangent continuity, that that would be a, a good thing. Now the, the cool thing is that this will run right over these edges between the surface. And you don't need to, for example, put a vertex here in the sub D to make that happen. As long as these are tangent, you can run over them. Um, Okay, so, so you can like put anything on top of this you want um, and build upon it. That did not snap to the surface. There we go. I pulled it too far away. Sometimes if you pull it a long ways away, it won't snap to the surface. So you got to make sure that that snapped to the surface. Um, Okay, so that's that's on the surface just fine. I'm just going to shrink that a little bit just so we can get a better idea of the tangency going on there. Um, and so here's the other way that you can connect things. In the feature creation settings, we have something that says no post-processing, which is what we used before. We can create a 3D sketch, which would create a 3D sketch along this edge, which you could use to trim a surface, for example. We could do a delete and knit. And the delete and knit will basically make this, it will take this guy, uh, delete the face inside it, and then knit the whole thing together. Um, which you could have done, you know, manually inside of SolidWorks, uh, you know, with four or five commands. Uh, but it makes it really easy if we do it here for you. Um, so let's go ahead and convert this. Okay, so you can see that we deleted some faces and we knit the whole thing together. So now this is a single solid with the power feature on the top. And obviously, we added it after the shell, so it's not shelled. You know, if you wanted to, you could have added added it before the shell. Uh, but you get the you get the general idea. 